the infant Shotoku Taishi is interesting to us for a few reasons, sort of beyond the art historical interest alone. We were really keen to do some scientific and technical investigation into the sculpture to figure out information about the construction. But there's also conservation issues, how fragile the sculpture is, whether it can travel to loan exhibitions, how to move it, how to protect it, how to mount it for seismic stability, all sorts of reasons. The way we carried them out was we developed a partnership with uh, Dr. Satoshi Minoshima at the University of Washington and uh, also with the Harborview Medical Center where we actually did the CT scanning. We're taking x-rays through the figure, front to back, in slices, which are then assembled by the computer into these 3D images. A few seconds in, we see the wood grain in the hands, the vertically aligned wood grain, and we see the white lines just below the wrists, which may be adhesive or some sort of denser material. You see the very light spots on the face at the top of the screen are actually the eyes of the figure. You can see really nicely how the figure is assembled. You see the head as a separate piece and then it kind of plugs like a cork in a bottle into the into the shoulders. You see that the shoulders are carved again from separate pieces that are attached to the main body. Okay so this view we're going from the side. The image commences with the upper arm coming down then the elbow, and then the forearm emerging. So you see a hole, which is the tenon or peg that's attaching the arm to the shoulder. So we see big bright spots at the center of the figure, which are these metal attachments. So it looks as though the figure was cut vertically at some stage, and then metal braces were put in to hold it back together again. So we could see from visual examination that there were joins, but we knew very little about them. We didn't know whether those joins were original to the fabrication of the sculpture or whether they were later repairs that some restorer had done. And the CT scanning is just like it's done on a human being. It's a system to form a three-dimensional image, if you like, of the interior workings of the object. So this is the movie going from the top of the figure through to the bottom. And you see really clearly how the head is made of the three different sections. Uh, the back of the head, which is at the bottom of our image, is actually seems to be a separate piece of wood, although again it's been aligned beautifully so that you see the grain conforms with the direction of the grain on the rest of the head, so it's really nicely done. We start to see the bamboo skewers that hold the eye plate in place, and then the bright flash of the two eyes, which are made out of glass, so they're different density to the wood. You see the ears on the side, they're all carved from the single piece of wood, they're not attached, uh, carved separately and attached, they're actually carved from the same piece of wood as the center of the head. And then that head cavity goes on, shrinks again as we move down to the neck. And uh, you can see some metal fixtures holding everything in place that are later fixtures. And the kind of sunburst effect that comes off them is an artifact of the imaging process. And you see the hands coming out nicely there. So you see those wooden peg dowel shapes that hold the shoulder onto the torso. Uh, what you also see is that plate-like shape on the back of the shoulder blade starting to emerge at the bottom of the image, which is either a restoration or it was a, a bit of the original joinery, which has sort of started to show as the sculpture's aged. Around the outside of the figure, there's a white line, which is the polychrome decoration on the surface of the sculpture, and it's denser, again, than the wood, so it appears as a white, an outline almost, around the figure. And moving down towards the waist, two big metal clamps holding the body together, and you can see the joins down the side. You can also see a big crack coming up off the interior cavity, and Again, that's one of the conservation reasons that we're interested to do this work is we can now see that there are several cracks that emerge from the interior cavity. So we can really see that there's some inherent fragility there. So by 226 or so, there's a dark flash as we merge from the torso into the waist, looking now at the, at the waist and the leg cavities. 
the cavity served as a kind of repository where they would often put offerings or materials for devotional reasons. All of the peripheral images that you can see, just sort of like shadows underneath the, the sculpture, are actually the blankets as it's going through the CT scanner. One of the things you see is the edges of that cavity are kind of scalloped in form, and that's because of the gouge that would have been used. That really gives us an indication of the form and shape and size of the gouge that was used to carve out the inner cavities of the sculpture. We start to see some insect pest damage as we move down the legs. And up on the top left of the image, you see these cavities, these channeling cavities, where the wood-boring beetle larvae have been making their way through the wood and there's a really dense white line which comes through one of those cavities and we think there may be some chitinous insect remains in some of the cavities although that remains to be investigated as the image finishes here you'll see a lot more of those woodworm holes and insect damages we don't have any in-house capacity for x-radiography, so we have to go out to do any kind of x-rays. And this is actually a perfect partnership because it's local and it's given us really beautiful results on, on these sculptures.